an oxymoron, an honest lawyer, and wise women. This is Living Lafayette. For the Lafayette Alliance in LaGrange, Georgia, I'm Richard Ingram. Marie Catherine was a remarkable woman. Well, before we get to Marie Catherine, let's back up. There are a lot of moving parts to this, a lot of traffic. So let's be sure we have the cast of characters down, or else it gets like a Hercule Poirot plot. So let's talk just a little bit about family. So Marie Catherine was married to Edouard de Mortier. These two were Lafayette's grandparents on his father's side. Marie Catherine and Edouard had four children, count them. One was Jacques Roche. He died in the War of Polish Succession, 1734. He's out of the picture. The other was Marguerite Madeleine, the elder of the two daughters. The other, Louise Charlotte. Louise Charlotte had a daughter, Louise Marie. This would become our Lafayette's closest confidant. And then finally, the youngest of these children would be Michel Louis Christophe du Mortier, the Marquis de Lafayette. This would be our Lafayette's father. Michel Louis married Julie de la Riviere. Her father was the Marquis de la Riviere. The Marquis married his cousin. So they had the two last names. It's a little confusing. It's like two Joneses and two Smiths getting married. Julie's grandfather was the Comte de la Riviere. So the Comte de la Riviere and the Marquis de la Riviere, they were father-in-law and son-in-law, not father and son. Okay, there are the cast of characters. If it gets a little chaotic, back it up and listen one more time through. We're back to Marie Catherine. Marie Catherine was a remarkable woman. When her husband Edward died in 1740, she was 50 years old. There was 20 years difference in their ages. You recall, Edward was part of Louis XV's bodyguard, and Louis was coming back from the hunt and Edward was riding alongside and somehow, some way, horse lost footing, horse went down. Edward's likewise and cracked his skull. We're assuming he had a cranial fracture. He survived uh, 39 months and then died at the age of 70. This left Marie Catherine now with three children. Jacques Roche, her eldest had already died in the War of Polish Succession, and now she had three children, however. One was Marguerite Madeline, who was likely in her teens, were unsure of her birth date. The other was Louise Charlotte, who was 11 years old, and then the youngest. This would be Michelle Louis Christophe Dumontier. This would be our Lafayette's father in due time. They lived at the Chateau de Vissac. This was in the Alvern. This was her husband's chateau. So 300 miles south of Paris, but this was an old chateau. Well, true, new chateau is an oxymoron. Just about all chateaus are old, but this one, it earned that reputation. It was not as productive, it was old. The Chateau de Chevaniac was in Marie Catherine's family line. Chevaniac was 10 miles northeast of Visac. So her husband, Edward, true, was Marquis de Lafayette, but was also Marquis de Visac. That was the chateau that he owned. Marie Catherine decided that she would move her family to the Chateau de Chevaniac, 10 miles northeast of Visac. It was more productive, it was newer. It was built in the 14th century, 1300s. That puts time in perspective. Still, it was newer nonetheless. It was 18 rooms, two flanking towers on either side. 
It's interesting, John Bessicom. John is an officer of the Lafayette Trail. He's also a member of the American Friends of Lafayette and of the Lafayette Alliance. He speculates that Edward and Marie Catherine, that they alternated their residence between Visak and Shivaniak. He admits that this idea hasn't been thoroughly vetted, but he bases it on two pieces of data. First of all, Shivaniak was larger and it was more productive than Visak. It would make sense that they would spend time at Shivaniak. The second is a little bit more palpable piece of data. In Edward's genealogy in his family tree, one of these records that the son, Michel Louis, was in fact born in 1732 at Chateau de Chivaniac, which would suggest that they alternated between the two, because recall, Edward did not die until 1740, Michel Louis born in 1732. So, Marie Catherine was a single mom, age 50, and she had children. Marie Catherine impresses me on three counts. First, she is decisive. Her husband dies. She makes a decision to move from Visac, lock, stock, and barrel, to Chateau de Chivaniac. Studies show that moving in this way is a major life-changing event, and she made it and never looked back. So this is Rule 91. Those of you who are NCIS fans and Leroy Jethro Gibbs, Rule 91, you make a decision, you don't look back, period, at the end of that sentence. So Marie Catherine was decisive. Second, she's kind. You remember we're talking about feudalism now. So there were overlords, lords, underlords, and then peasants. So Shivaniak had peasants working the land. And Marie Catherine would supervise these peasants and their land ownership, peripherally. Louis Gutchuk, who is the great 20th century scholar on Lafayette, says that peasants would travel 20 leagues to seek the advice of Marie Catherine. And that when they would come, Lafayette would observe Marie Catherine's interaction with these peasants how kind she was, how respectful she was. I can see your mind clicking. If they traveled 20 leagues, just how far was that? And you're comparing that to your 10,000 steps a day. Well, the term league comes from the Gauls, and it's the distance one can walk comfortably over an hour, usually three miles. So, if we talk 10,000 steps and assume 2,000 steps per mile, 10,000 steps is going to be five miles, one and two-thirds leagues. So if these peasants are walking 20 leagues, we're talking 60 miles. 2,000 steps per mile, 120,000 steps, 6,000 steps per hour, 20 hours. No more whining about your 10,000 steps. Incidentally, recent studies suggest 4,000 to 7,000 steps may be optimal, but the 10,000 makes you feel better. So Marie Catherine was kind, and she gave advice to these peasants. She also purchased the right to administer justice in surrounding villages. Feudalism, you remember, public power in private hands. Marie Catherine, not only was she decisive, she was kind and she was smart. The third reason I admire her. Now, not only was she smart, she was wise. Let's admit it. High IQs and wisdom are not necessarily paired. There are a lot of high IQs and common sense doesn't parallel. But in Marie Catherine's case, they were paired in tightly.